Hi, my name is Tolo Eros, aka Chef Eros. I'm the founder and the executive chef of the Cookie Jar Bakery and Eros and Gourmet Foods. I love to cook out of the box and the most important thing to me when I'm cooking are the quality of my ingredients, the presentation of my food and of course the taste. My dripping chocolate cakes are very, very eye-catching but my cookies made me famous. On this episode of Chef Rican, I'm going to be making a jollof rice risotto. I'm using risotto rice for a creamy texture. I'm serving this with a seared pepper prawns, a salad puree, and a very, very, very delicious sweet chili mousse. Sit back, relax, and let me take you on this culinary ride. One last thing we want to add, onions, rough chop, and into the stock, all of this goes. So to make this risotto, I want to start off with the things that take the longest to make, which will be the stock and the tomato sauce. So to do this, I'll grab my pot, and in that pot, I'll put 500 grams of chicken wings. That goes in there. And now I'm gonna chop up my aromatic spices. So I'm chopping up some, parsley, um, some celery stalks. All right, so the stalks go in. So that's three celery stalks go in there. Carrots. Don't worry about the sizes, just a rough chop would do. You really just want to get the flavors in there, to be honest. Carrots going in. Just some parsley, just right there. Everything with making a stock is really rough cuts, really. So some parsley goes in, black pepper corns. I'll probably take about a, a few corns of that, so about one, table, one tablespoon worth of corns. And four cups of water. So that goes in there. Two more aromatic spices that are very important. Ginger and garlic. Using the side of your knife, squash down, okay? And that should let the garlic come off nice and simple. Now because it's a stock, I can just chuck that right in. With the ginger, I wanna use a teaspoon. And the teaspoon really just allows this, the skin peel off easily. And I'm just gonna cut that ginger into two and chuck that into the pot. Now over to some more spices. Some sweet chili goes in. And some white pepper. Pinch of salt. Stock goes on the fire. So our stock is on the fire. The next thing we're gonna get into is the tomato sauce. So I'm gonna grab my blender, and in my blender, I'm gonna pop one can of tomato plum. That goes in first so that the juices can let the blender run. An onion, one whole onion. Cut this into fours. Quarters. Tatashe, which is a large chili. It's been cleaned already. So I'm just gonna cut this up into pieces. Put that in the blender. Two scotch bonnets, AKA atarudu. All right, cut this in halves as well. Pop that in there. Two cloves of garlic that have been cleaned. And one ginger. Goes in, close up my blender. And it's time to blitz. And that's about it. Nice and blended. I'm gonna grab my pot. And in the pot, I'm gonna pour in all of that tomato sauce. That goes in there. Add one tablespoon of canola oil. I like canola oil, because it, it's, it's really good oil. It's light and doesn't have so much of a flavor. And we put this on the heat. So give this a quick stir. Medium heat, leave that to cook for about 20 minutes. One last thing we want to add, onions. Rough chop, 
and into the stock all of this goes. We give this a quick stir. Take that up the heat. And now it's time to start frying the tomatoes. All right, my pan, I'm going to have half a tablespoon of oil. Let's make that one tablespoon of oil. I'm using canola oil again. In there, we're gonna add our tomato. So all of the tomato goes in there. So right now it's pretty thick, uh, but I'm gonna water that down with some of the stock and that would make all of the liquid we need for the risotto. To season, some pepper, some salt, some curry, some thyme. So I'll start with the salt. Pinch of salt, a half a teaspoon of dry pepper, another half teaspoon of curry powder, and a quarter of a teaspoon Stir that down. Okay, so this is ready and our stock is ready as well. So we're gonna drain this. And there we have it. Oh, yum yum. Let's get any excess liquid out. Okay, and there we have our stock. So this goes over here. And that's our stock ready. One cup of stock in here. All right. So that completes this. So tomato base is done. You can switch that off, put that aside. And now over to the risotto. Now the broth itself is made out of um, a butter and oil base with some onions caramelized, adding in some chicken stock or vegetable stock or fish stock depending on the type of rice itself that you're trying to cook. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the risotto, the risotto itself. Um, to do that, I need a pot, I need some butter, I need some oil, and I need some onions. Now, risotto itself is an Italian rice that's made out of uh, short grain rice that absorbed quite a bit of moisture and uh, leaves you with a really creamy texture. Um, the rice itself kind of looks like an ofada rice, so if you can't find the risotto rice like I had a difficulty with today, you can always just uh, substitute that for ofada rice. So now we start off with the risotto rice itself, okay? In the pot, I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter, of unsalted butter. And as that starts to melt down, we're going to add canola oil. The Italians would use the olive oil, but I'm using the canola oil. Now, two tablespoons of canola oil should do this. That goes in there. While that's heating down, straight to the onions. Now, onion goes in. So, let me tell you a little bit about risotto. 
Risotto itself is traditionally an Italian dish, an Italian rice dish made using the arborio rice most popularly that's cooked to a creamy consistency in a broth. Now the broth itself is made out of um, a butter and oil base with some onions caramelized, adding in some chicken stock or vegetable stock or fish stock depending on the type of rice itself that you're trying to cook. Um, if you can't find the short grain rice, which is the arborio rice, um, I find that you can actually substitute this for our traditional ofada rice. I myself found, found it difficult to actually get the rice, so feel free to try the ofada rice and let me know how that goes. Okay, so quick wash on the rice, just to get some excess starch out. You don't want to take too much starch out of the risotto, because that's all part of the process just any dirt or anything like that, okay? Uh, bowl and strain all the water out. And we set that aside. I'm gonna start working on my shrimps. So seasoning the shrimps. Shrimps, some fish seasoning. I'm just gonna take about a pinch, which is, I would say about two teaspoons of fish seasoning. Pinch of salt. Crushed dried garlic, which I'm gonna to add to this. And some crushed chilies. White pepper. And just give that a quick set the side in the fridge. And now our onions are fully caramelized and the rice goes in. Set that down. I mean, <laughs> if only you knew how it smelled in this kitchen right now. Just the onions and the butter and the rice is heavenly. So we'll let that cook down for about a minute or two until the rice becomes a little more translucent and then we start adding the stock a little at a time. So I'll start off with one ladle, using the ladle. That goes in there. Okay. And one ladle of the tomato sauce. That goes in, stir that down, make sure it's very well incorporated and cover, reduce your heat to the lowest point on your gas stove. Hey. So it's getting really, really heated in here. Time to, for the past salad puree. That's almost ready. So to make the salad puree, I'm going to use a blender. And in that blender, I'm going to put in some sweet corn, but using a measuring cup just so that I can have this accurately done. We're going to do half a cup of sweet corn. That goes in. Farrow peas, half a cup of that. Okay. One whole apple. Take out the core. So using a small knife, just take off the sides. So, so that's one whole apple going in that blender. Okay. Now for some veggies, parsley, just about a handful of parsley. A little more, a little less here and there should be fine. If we were to measure this, you'd probably want just about one tablespoon worth of chopped parsley, okay? So that goes in there. Some yogurt. Now using a tablespoon, and when I say tablespoon, I mean a measuring tablespoon. We're gonna use three tablespoons of fresh yogurt. And from, for some sweetness, I'm using one tablespoon of honey. But this honey is, just, is not just any regular honey, it's actually 
ginger honey, which means I've grated some ginger into the honey. I did that yesterday, popped that in the fridge, left that to, to um, basically um, diffuse into the honey, and that goes in there. And now we're going to blend all of this together. And just gradually adding water one tablespoon at a time. Okay, so one tablespoon of water was just fine and now I'm going to take this up to a two point speed and let that keep running. And to finish, All right, and there we have it, my jollof rice risotto. All right, so last bit of all of this before we start plating would be making the vinaigrette. This really delicious vinaigrette requires some sweet chili, some olive oil, some sesame oil, some honey, some balsamic vinegar, pinch of salt, pinch of white pepper, pinch of sweet chili, and that's about it. So let's get started. Two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of sweet chili sauce, half a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and one tablespoon of sesame oil. Okay. Pinch of white pepper, pinch of dried chilies, and pinch of salt. Give that a whisk. Finally, some honey, ginger honey. One tablespoon of honey. Again, good whisk. So really and truly what we have here is a fusion of Nigerian, Italian, and Asian all in one dish. Check on our rice. So now, prawns. Now, the heat is on. Coconut oil, just a little there, just to coat the bottom of the pan, uh, about a teaspoon worth. So oil's hot. First, garlic goes in. About a teaspoon worth of garlic. And then some onions. Oh, smells divine. So the shrimps are going in one at a time. While that's searing on the other side, we're checking on the rice, which is completely done. Okay, so prawns are done. Now down to the fun part, plating. To do this, I'm gonna use a white plate. I'm gonna start off with my salad puree. And with a brush, I'm gonna take a chunk of the salad puree and just drive that down across the sides of the plate. Just like that. Enough so that I can get a good bit of that in my meal itself, okay? Now the risotto. I'm using a bowl to make a mold so that you can get a nice mound and not a messy mound of rice. So that's the bowl and that's the rice in there. But it's very important that you actually mold this in well. Otherwise, it's going to come out crumbling, all right? So you make sure you don't have any spaces in between. And then we're just going to top this over like that. 
and just let that release out. That should come out nice and easy. There we go. Okay. Then the shrimps, rather the prawns. That goes right at the top here. Remember that vinaigrette? That's just going to go and drizzle around, around the plate. All right. And to finish, some pasta. All right, and there we have it, my jollof rice risotto. Pretty easy to make. I mean, it, it smells amazing. I've paired this with the salad puree and the sweet chili vinaigrette, and I've put this on um, with some seared pepper prawn. But before we forget, we're gonna pair this with a glass of chilled white wine, just because it's seafood. It looks amazing. <laughs> I'm just gonna dig in. I'm actually just gonna dig in. Mm. The prawns are absolute perfection. I mean, everything together marries perfectly well. The risotto is tender and creamy. The, the, the salad puree is sweet and tangy. The, 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 the shrimp marries well together with everything. I mean, even that sesame oil that's drizzled over it just makes everything really, really, really good. I told you guys, you need to try this at home. Try with your friends and family. Impress them with your meal. Plate it nicely. You don't have to do it exactly the way I've done. You can plate it slightly, slightly differently, but just give it a shot. Risotto jollof rice is a killer. I tell you that. To find out more about this recipe and more, visit ebonylifetv.com forward slash chef and check out my www cheferos.com. Take a picture of whatever you've made at Chef Eros at Ebony Life TV. Let us know how it went. I hope you do try it and I tell you it will be a party in your mouth.